Guys, it's today. Got a Land Rover Discovery 4. Full codes, lack of power, manifold pressure, turbocharger boost pressure. Now, these engines suffer with underneath this cover the inlet manifolds split so you end up with the boost pressure what the turbocharger is producing being leaked out before it gets into the engine which then gives you boost pressure faults now this is not a job for the faint hearted to replace the rocker covers which are the inlet manifolds on this particular engine <clears throat> so we're going to be replacing the inlet manifolds both sides which are basically the rocker covers it can be done in situ it's a bit of a strip down but it can be done in situ those fault codes can be misdiagnosed as a bad turbocharger but usually you'll see oil vapor which I'll show when I get this cover off down it's usually always the driver side unit that fails but we do both to preempt anything for the future so we're going to be doing the timing belt at the same time only because we're stripping most of it out of the way to get the rock covers off so just a good time to do it. Got nearly 90,000 miles on this, so we're going to do it at the same time. So it's going to be a double video. We're going to start getting plastic bits and pieces out of the way, rock cover off. When we get down, we can show you where the split is, and then we'll start stripping this out. We'll see where we go from there. Okay, so so far we've got. Our engine top cover off. Been underneath and we've drained coolant out because we've got to take the top hoses off. Intake pipe has come off up here. Coolant line has come off. Viscous fans come off. We will need viscous fans and spanners to remove this is a left-handed thread. So you need to hold the pump pulley and rotate as if you were doing up to undo left-handed thread. So, <clears throat> next thing we need to start removing is this intake branch. So, got a bolt here, and down the sides is two eight mil bolts if you haven't got a tool for these but as soon as they were doing the timing belt as well we're gonna to have to take these off anyway so we need to get as much of this off so I'm gonna come down here and I'm do the two eight mil bolts this side and this side down now one's already out you can see the other one's hardly doing that cover the split we're talking about you can see the oil vapor here is underneath this wiring loom. Very difficult to see until you get it stripped off. But we're gonna get this new GR pipes off and strip off the pipe work on the front and start getting the tubes off over the top. So we get a bit more off and we'll come back and look where we are. Okay, so now we can see the amount of stuff we've got to strip get these off now you look you see a crack along here which is where they fail which causes the boost leak I'm still not done yet I'm stripping obviously let's take off fuel injection system fuel rails both sides injectors out of both sides of the EGR motor, etc. 
said it's not a small job. This side's pretty much ready to go now. We just got the bolts to hold the rocker down and then let down and undo. And this one will lift off. This side's slightly different because the bolts are underneath this front cam belt cover. So the cam belt cover needs to be pulled forward. That's why I said I'm going to do the cam belt at the same time. But I get this one off and I'm going to show you the crack a bit easier. Okay, so we've got one side removed. So it's good for you to get to this stage. I just said the amount of things you've got to come off is a hell of a lot. Time belt covers obviously off as well because as I said, bolts for this one are behind the timing cover. It covers it here. So the time belt covers will come off, which is why we're doing the belt at the same time. If we look at the old unit, there's a crack all right along. So this is the new unit to go in. Nice and tidy. Come to the gaskets, come to the bolts. Anything you've got to swap is the oil cap. My right side, other side now removed. Cleaned up the surface. Not so much of a strip down this side to get this one off, but it still takes a while. Place this one, I'm already done. Get this one on, bolt it down, and then start looking at putting stuff back across the top. The last job will be to lock the engine up and get the belt done. So get this one on and we'll come back. Right, so all the fuel injectors are back in, fuel rails, etc. Spill off tubes all around the back, wiring loom has been folded back over now as well both sides top you just got to put the inlet back on obviously the EGRs go down each side however I'm not going to do that just yet as I said we're doing the belt so we're going to leave that out of the way if you were just doing the inlets obviously you get to this stage it's pretty straightforward from here now you see intake pipe back on your EGRs and just connect up your hoses and bits and pieces. I'll try and do a time belt as a separate video, but we'll already be at this stage. But I can sort of go through what we've taken off to get to this stage, and then we'll go through timing it up, removing the belt, etc. We'll do the wall pump at the same time. Um, so, yeah, if we're doing just the inlets up to now, it's pretty straightforward from here. It's not a great deal of stuff. So you've got this with your EGR, pipes both sides. The rest of it's just plastics, boost hosing and your viscous fan really. Um, and obviously if you have taken the cover off for the timing belt, you need to put that back on. Um, you may have just pulled it forward slightly, but if not, that needs to go back on. And then you're pretty much job done. Um, so, <laughs> I'm going to get into the tying belt, but if you're looking to do just the inlets, that's what you've got to do to do it. It's very involved, time consuming, can take two days, but it is doable with the body on. So if you need a time belt video, we'll do another video on that to see if we can go through that with you. Right, okay. Time belt and water pump replacement TDV6. This is a three litre version Discovery 4. Now obviously this is a follow on video to the inlets being done, that's why we're stripped down. Now this is obviously our time belt layout, you can see. And you need to basically get it to this stage. Now you need to disconnect or take the top engine cover off this cover here, take the top engine cover off, and then you've got a boost hose which comes from the front of the engine, the intercooler, into the top of the inlet. You haven't got to disconnect any of this lot. Um, coolant hose need to go as well. Anything that's attached to the front casing will need to go, wiring, 
solenoids, etc. Top fan cover come off. Just that cowling there. And then we need to look at getting the viscous fan off of here. Left-handed thread. You'll need viscous fan spanners to remove the fan. Once the fan's out of the way, this is the setup you're going to look at. This is the casing that covers the belt. This is the pulley that the belt runs around and the viscous fan comes through the middle. This is what you'll be holding on with your viscous fan spanner. Goes around the bolts. Anti-clockwise or tighten it. You need to go clockwise to loosen it. It is left-handed thread. So you can undo these three bolts while the belt's still on or loosen them off while it's still on the belt. It'll make like getting these out easier. This is the water pump pulley, same thing, loosen these. Tensioner will have a bolt and pull out. That's the idea. So tensioners here that will pull out the way. This E socket and the crankshaft pulley will just pull off. These three pull off. Once you take your belt off first, once you've got it to this stage, you need to undo the bolts around the outside edge, and the whole thing is one lump. It might be a bit tight; it's got a seal behind it, but you pull it off. And once you've got to that stage, this is what you'll be faced with. Now, you're going to want locking kit, ideally. Laser number is 4273. That's useful for the two sevens and the three litre. This is the locking pin we need. The flywheel, this goes through a blanking plug above the starter. We need to get underneath it and undo the starter motor. And that will go through a blanking hole. These two are the pins that will go through these slots. They need to be around here and they go through into the cylinder head. So we get underneath it, obviously disconnect the battery first, we get underneath it and we get this start motor out and we get this fitted. We have to rotate the engine to find our place. That's easily enough done from underneath if we need to. We get our locking pins in. Okay, so we're underneath. We need to get the start motor out of the way. Under the trays off, start motor is here. On this back side, there is a plate which bolts to the engine. Two bolts supporting the starter motor from the back. There's two bolts, one here and one there. You have to take it out to get the starter out. Right, once you've unbuckled your star motor, this is obviously the bracket in the back. Two bolts, obviously you disconnect connections. The blanking plug, you're after. Is this one here? This needs to come out, and then your locking tool goes to in here. Here. Okay, so that's the locking pin fitted through the blanking plug in the gearbox, bolted through where the starter motor sits. You will need to rotate the engine around 21mm socket until it locks in. And then we'll go up the top and we'll have a look at where the cams are. Right, so now back up to the top, <coughs> you see. This is the position that the pins need to go in at. So now we need to remove this. Got a bolt here, bolt there, that bolt there. Remove this. <coughs> also loosen three bolts on that pulley and three bolts on this pulley. After you've taken this off, we can then loosen the tensioner bolt. So, uh, get this off. Loosen them bolts. 
Don't undo them completely, take them out, just loosen them. And then undo the tensioner, get the belt off. I'm going to remove the viscous fan pulley, three bolts. Loosened off, loosened the three bolts on each pulley, just so they're loose. And you loosen the tensioner main bolt, which then makes the bolt slack. We can then remove the tensioner and the belt, and then come off nice and easy. That's your old belt. So now we need to remove this, send the bolt, get rid of this, this comes with a kit, and so does this. We're also doing the water pump, so the water pump we will remove as well, three mil bolts on there, on there, one down there. Take that off, obviously be careful if you haven't drained the coolant out, because the coolant will come out of here, have something to catch. Get these bits off and the water pump out and come back. Okay, so obviously the rest of our pulleys are off, top pulley, middle pulley, and the pump's out. As I said, if you haven't drained the coolant, you will get quite a flood out here, so try and drain it first. So now it's gonna clean up the face, we'll get our new pulley bolted in and our new water pump. Now we can get the belt back on. And these need to be turned to a fully clockwise position, <coughs> like that. And then when the tensioner takes up the slack, they will move back into position. You need to make sure when we do the belt that we're not at an extremity one way or the other. It needs to be somewhere in the middle of the slot. So, but we'll come to that. So let's get our thing bolted back on and get our pump back in. Right, new ball pump bolted on. Two new idler pulleys bolted on. These are the same pulley, so it doesn't make much difference where around they go. The tensioner's going to sit back here. The tensioner, we've got an arrow, an allen key. This arrow, when you've bolted it on, you won't do this bolt up tight, you'll do it up loose. Get your allen key, and the belt's on to tension, and when you turn, you're looking for this notch here to be lined up with this hole. As you turn, this notch will come round, and when it's in the middle of this window, you know the tension is correct, and you can nip the bolt up. So I'll show you when we do it, and just so you can see it outside. So now we're going to bolt that back on, get our belt loosely fitted, and then we can take tension up. Okay, our belt is fitted loosely. We need to make sure that all the slack is gone from this side, as the tensioner will pull the belt back this direction so these cans will turn this way that's why I've left these loose because they are moving the slots so the belt route around the crank around the idler up round can pulley around the idler around the can pulley back around the tensioner and back around the crank now you see how can go this is not tightened all the way still loose we need to twist this round and key round until the tab is in that window. So we get an allen key and we get a 13mm socket or spanner on this ready to tighten up when we're in the right place. Okay, so 10mm allen key, 13mm. We're going to turn anti clockwise. As we turn, we're waiting. For that to line up like that you see that needs to line up as we go around we line it up like that and then you can tighten 13 mil down Keep your tension. <coughs> and 
need to check that you're not the bolts on up against one side or the other on the slot. Wind one out a little bit and look, you're not up against the edge on the slot. So now we're tensioned up. You now remove our locking pins, rotate the engine round three or four times. Make sure the locking pins go back in. Okay, so once you've rotated around three or four times, make sure your pins go back in. If you're happy with that, bump this viscous fan bearing back on. And don't forget, obviously, to do these up before you take the pins out and rotate it. Now we can put the front cover back on and start getting it buttoned up. Right, all our pulleys back on, belt back on. We'll finish that down here. Now we can get our coolant hoses back across the front. Get all the hoses attached. And then put our inlet intake back on. Wire the rest up. And then we're pretty much ready to fill up with some coolant. Right, so all back together now. That's this all clipped back on. Fill up the coolant. Fill up the oil. So it's just a brief overview of what you need to do. Do the inlet manifolds, our covers, and the time belt. I will get a full time belt video on the next one we do. This should be a couple of weeks time. So there will be a full time belt video from start to finish on this particular model. Other than that, good luck if you attempt it. Take your time. You'll get there.